Shavu Tov, Agut Avoch, and welcome to our program. On Thursday was Chav Bey Shvat, the old site of the Lebetzin, Halabondi Satsit Kondis Chayom Mushko Nishmos Eden. And this is a continuation, this is within the three days of Chav Bey Shvat. On Chav Bey Shvat Tavshin Nun Beis, and of course, Tavshin Nun Beis has a special sensitivity. At that time, we didn't know. Uh, but the Rebbe knew. Chav Bey Shvat Tavshin Nun Beis was five weeks, or four weeks and five days, before Chav Zayin Odelishin of Tavshin Nun Beis. And we know the sensitivity that is connected with that day. Chav Bey Shvat Tavshinun Beis was on a Monday. And the Rebbe let it know before that he wants a Kuntalis to be printed for Chav Bey Shvat Tavshinun Beis. And the Rebbe gave out the Kuntalis. We will soon get to it. Um, it was not known, though, whether the Rebbe is going to Davim Mayadiv in 770 or maybe in his house on President Street, because many things connected with the Rebbe were done on President Street. Nevertheless, on Sunday, after dollars, uh, the Rebbe let it be known that he's going to Davim Mayadiv in 770, and after Mayadiv, he will give out the Kuntalis. When it was known that the Rebbe is going to Davim Mayadiv in 770, that spread all over, or whatever they are, they are, are um, people of, an, of Anash who, who live in New York, outside of New York, that the Rebbe is going to Davin in 770, and he is going to give a Kuntalis after Mayadiv. And there was a large crowd. The Rebbe came out five minutes, around five minutes after seven. And uh, the Rebbe davened Mayadiv. Uh, the Rebbe said before, in a sikha that we should uh, we should we should daven loudly and with simcha, and that's what you heard when the Rebbe came in. There was a the song of shuvu shuvu was 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 sung but with with great enthusiasm, very very loudly. And uh, after Mayadiv, the Rebbe said a sikha for about ten minutes. The Rebbe went up on the bima, and the Rebbe said a sikha for about ten minutes. Spoke about the Rebbe he spoke about all those who are named Chaya or Mushka or Chaya Mushka after the Rebetzin, that they should all be a Dugmo Chaya, a live example of the Rebetzin. That's what the Rebbe said at that Sikha. Sikha took about 10 minutes, then the Rebbe went down, and he started giving out the Kuntalis. This is the Kuntalis, Rabbi Isai, that the Rebbe that the Rebbe gave out. This is the Kuntalis that the Rebbe gave out. In this Kuntalis, in, the, in this bag, there was a there was a $5 bill, which Chomish is the name of the Rebetzin, Ches Memshin, the Rosh Tevis of the Rebetzin name. And Baruch Hashem, over the years, the Rebbe gave out dollars many times. Uh, nevertheless, it should be a $5 bill that was a rarity, and in this bag, there was also a $5 bill. To that, there was a Kuntalis. And the Kuntalis is Kevitz Chav Beis Shvat. The Rebbe asked for this Kuntalis. And not only that, and to that, in this bag, also in a small plastic bag, was a piece of Lekach. And that's what the Rebbe gave out on that night. The Rebbe stood for five hours. The Rebbe stood for five hours and the Rebbe gave out the skuntalis, the five dollars, and the lekach. The Rebbe gave out over 10,000 kuntalesim. Kuntalesim with dollars and lekach that night. Uh, and not only that, Chsidim said that the Rebbe was uvgelegt. Uvgelegt means the Rebbe was besimcha. Um, he, in, if you can, if we can say that in a happy disposition. Um, there were many nagunim that were sang in, in the five hours, and the Rebbe encouraged all the nagunim, 
It looked like it was Keshel Blocho, where the Rebbe encouraged in the Gunim. Some children passed by the Rebbe. Some said, we want Mashiach now. And the Rebbe answered enthusiastically, Amen. Oh, one little boy said, Yechi Melech, And the Rebbe answered, Amen. One little girl passed by, and she said her name is Chaya Mushke. And the Rebbe says, Zosleben, Zoslangleben, mit gesunte Yol. And the Rebbe smiled to a lot of people. The Rebbe encouraged this singing. And uh, in general, as Chassidim said, the Rebbe is given uvgelegt, in an upbeat mood, and smiled a lot, and encouraged the singing, and so on. And the Rebbe was there for more than, than, more than five hours, because the Rebbe came in at five minutes after seven, and he left at 12.30. And he gave out 10,000 kontoresim. And in that kuntres, there were sikhs that the Rebbe said, including of, of the year Tovshin Nun Beis. There's also a sikh from Tovshin Nun Beis, from Pasha's Beshalach, that's included in this, in this, in this, in this kuntres. And that the Rebbe gave out for five hours, 10,000 or over 10,000 kuntresim. We will return to the contents of a sikh in a moment. But first, our customary story. As this is a broadcast connected with the Levitson, uh, we want to mention several stories of the Levitson. My sister, the Levitson Leia Khan, the wife of the Biel Khan, was friendly, close to the Levitson, and she was talking to the Levitson very often on the phone. And it was Late in the evening, um, our father, the Pshnei Zalman Olav Asholem, lived with my sister the last few years when he was here in Crown Heights before he moved to Eretz Yisrael. And this was already the, the, the time that he would already be home, but he wasn't home yet. And it's already late, late in the afternoon, and our father isn't home, and my sister is worried. And when she's talking to the Levitson, she says to the Levitson, she's worried. He's elderly, he's frail, he's not home yet. The Levitson listened, and she kind of ended the conversation. A few moments later, half hour later or so, not much longer, the Levitson calls my sister, and she says, my man had gesagt, as I had him gesehen zu Mayeriv. My husband said that he saw him by Mayeriv. And what happened here is simple. Malaya told the Levitson that our father is not home. The Levitson didn't ask any questions. Smart person that she was, because she didn't want to, to, to make the agony bigger. So she didn't dwell on it. She didn't ask any questions. She ended the conversation. She called the Rebbe on the phone, and she told the Rebbe, Leia is worried, her father is not home. And the Rebbe answered her, Yichobem gizen in shul tzumayeliv. And she called back my sister to say, my husband said that he saw him in shul tzumayeliv. We were privileged to come to the Rebbe's house, to the Rebbe's house, the Rebbe's house from time to time. I would call her, she would tell us when to come. Um, and whenever we came, the table was was set uh, not only magnificently, royally. And I was told by the people of the house that the sign by the Rebetzin that you want a table to be as, as, as nice as possible, if she told them to put out the gold cutlery, this was a gold set. Of, of, a, of, a, of a spoon, a fork, and a knife. This was not a dinnerware. This was only, this is a tea set. And it was either gold or, or gold-plated. And on it, it said very daintily, very nicely, SS. Every time we were there, uh, that tea set was on the table. And as the Bnei Abayis told me, that is a sign that the Levitson wants the table to be as nice as possible. One of the times, um, I asked the Levitson, what is, 
what does SS stand for? She said, my Schwester Schindel Schneerson, and she choked up. And I knew, can't ask any more questions. What we figured out is that the Rebbe and Schindel Schneerson, the Rebbe and sister, lived in Paris in the years 1937, 1938, to get in the same apartment house as the Rebbe, number nine of a certain street, in the same apartment house. In 1938, at the beginning of 1939, Rebbe Schindel's husband, the Menachem Mendel Hakein Hodenstein, who was a big meyuchis, he was a grandson of the Rebbe Marash. His mother, Rebbe Chaya Mushke Hodenstein, was the daughter of the Rebbe Marash. His father, Rebbe Meisha Hodenstein, passed away before. The Meisha Hakein Hodenstein, he was the son-in-law of the Rebbe Marash, passed away before. His mother was not well. So he went back in difficult times. He went back from Europe to to Poland and to take care of his mother. And indeed, Rachman and Litzlan, he, he never came back. Um, they were in the concentration camps. The Rebbe would say Kaddish, the second day of Rosh Hashanah, every year the Rebbe would say Kaddish for her because she passed away in a concentration camp. They had an adopted son. Uh, so before, and it seems before she left, she left this son, this this set with the Rebetzin. And this set, and this tea set, was very, very dear and very precious to the Rebetzin. And it had SS, the name Schindel Schneerson, inscribed on each, on each, on each, on, on, on the spoons, the forks, and the knives. When I would go to the Soil, I would call the Levitson to say, I'm going to answer soil, this and the days, and she would give me a bracha and so on. And once she said that when you go to Eretz Yisrael, I want you to visit my aunt. The Levitson had an old aunt. She lived till over a hundred. And she was the aunt, she was the wife of Levitson and Schneerson. Levitson and Schneerson was the uncle of the Levitson and the Rebbe. As a matter of fact, in the at the end of Tovshin Tes Zion, the Bensi and Schneelson came to the United States to be with the Rebbe for Yom Tev, for, El, for, 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 for the Yom Im Tevim. The Rebbe and the Rebetzin went to the airport to greet him. Not only that, the Rebbe insisted on carrying the valise of the Bensi and Schneelson. Moreover, on Simchas Teda, the Rebbe would dance with the Rashag, and that year, the Rebbe asked the Bensi and Schneelson to join them in the dancing. So, uh, and then after Rebbein Tzien Schneerson passed away, uh, his wife didn't have, didn't have any children, Nebuch, and she lived alone under the Chei Ashi in Tel Aviv. So the Rebbein asked me to go and visit her and give her a message. And the message is, we are thinking about her, we are worried about her, and she is not alone. She is not alone. She is not alone. I remember when I came to her apartment on the Chovadashi, giving her the message of the Levitzen. You see how much life that message brought to her. And this is our Levitzen. She sits in Brooklyn, and she worries about an old aunt that's close to 100 years old. That's all alone in Tel Aviv, and she sends a message, a messenger and a message, to tell her that you are not alone. We think about you, we, we know what the we means. We think about you, we worry about you, and you are not alone. The Debitson would make a point to speak to each one of the children separately. And she knew very well that the children know who she is, so that they shouldn't be intimidated. She made sure to ask them very simple questions. She looked at each child. She smiled a lot. She lowered her voice. And the moment the child only started saying something, she nodded her head, yes, 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 to make them feel at home. But she made sure to speak to each and every child, to make sure that every child feels 
the knows that the Levitson spoke to them and cared for them and worried about them and asked them questions. As to my work, the Levitson would ask me questions that showed that she knew all the details of my work, as if she read all the reports that I <laughs> sent to the Levitson. She knew, she asked questions that she knew all the details. And she made us feel that she's part and, 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 and she's with us in everything we do. On the one hand, the Levitson was a private person. You didn't see her in public and so on. On the other hand, the Levitson gave everything. She gave herself more than anyone. The Levitson gave herself to the Levitson. The Levitson did not have a life of her own. The life of the Levitson was the Levitson. Rabbi say concerning um, the Sikha, and there's a whole contest with many Sikhas. This is a Sikha that has to do with the Padshah of Bishalach, which is read Bishalach. And not only that, this Sikha, the Rebbe said, in the year Tafshinun Bez, and, and, and it was sent past Bashalach, and it was still in time that it was able to be printed in, in this Kuntalis. And in this Sikha, the Rebbe brings the Posuk, Oz Yosh and Meshe of Israel, that Meshe sang together with the Jewish people. But after that, it says that Miriam also sang together with everyone. It says, Vatikach Miriam Hanivio, Achis Arin, and Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Arin, took as Ativiodo, she took the drum in her hand. Vatitzeno Kalanoshi Machaleo Besupim Uvim Chelis, and all the women followed her. Supi means drums, Mechelis means dances. Vatan Lehem Miriam, and Miriam told them, Shiro Lashem Ki Goi Go, and so on. So we see a few things here. We see that Miriam led the Jewish people, the Jewish women. Moreover, she outdid the men. Why? Because here it says, Besupim uvim the men only sang. The women outdid the men, Besupim with the drums, uvim with the dancing, dances. And now everyone asks the question, it's a world-class question. Everyone asks, drums? Did I hear well? Drums? Where, where do they get drums for, from? In the Midbar, all of a sudden, they all had drums? All the women had drums? In the Midbar, in the desert? How do they get drums? And if you are asking yourself this question, you're in good company. That of Rashi. And Rashi answers, Muftoch is hoyutzit kol the Tzitkoniyas of the generation, the righteous women of the generation, were certain that Almighty God is going to perform miracles for them. And they brought with them drums. That's what Rashi says. Let's think for a moment. One went out and, what went on in a Jewish house when the henchmen of Pali came in the middle of the night, and they said, get out, raus, raus, as the Germans, Yimachshman, would say, get out. And of course, the henchmen wanted they should get out because the elders in, in Mitzrayim were dying. So they wanted to get them to get out as soon as possible. Now, the husband was busy. Why? The matter says, because from all the garments that had gold and silver, so he was busy connect, collecting the garment, the, the gold and silver, called Bizas Mitzrayim, the loot of Mitzrayim, of Mitzrayim. But she, the wife of the house, righteous woman that she was, what was she concerned? He was concerned in getting Bizas Mitzrayim, in getting the gold and the silver. She was concerned to make sure that she takes a drum. And the husband took, looked at his wife with the drum, 
And he said, Esther, what, you got yourself a new shaitl for the desert? And she says, no, my husband, this is not a shaitl. This is not a shaitl in this round box. No, this is not a shaitl. So what is it? It's a drum. And he would say, a drum? You're going to start drumming? And he said to himself, she's going to start drumming. I'm going to have to run away from the desert. She says, you don't know my husband. Almighty God is going to perform miracles for us. And I am going to drum. So he was busy with Bizas Mitzrayim, with the gold and silver. She was busy with the drum. Noshim Tzitkonis, the righteous women. And the Rebbe continues. Why was Miriam Zeche? Why was Miriam so meritorious that she was Zeche? She merited to lead the Jewish women. So the Rebbe brings a medrash about her name. Why was she called Miriam? And the medrash says, Miriam al Shem Hamil. Miriam comes from the word bitterness. That Miriam was a bitter woman. Bitter woman. Now, was, what was, why was Miriam bitter about? Was she bitter that her next-door neighbor has a wall-to-wall -wall carpet and she doesn't? The Rebbe would mention wall-to-wall -wall carpets. Was she busy that her neighbor has a crystal chandelier and she doesn't? Is that what Miriam was bitter about? Absolutely not. Miriam didn't care for carpets. And she didn't care for crystal chandeliers. And she didn't care for anything that is connected with Gashmias. Why was she bitter? She was bitter about the condition and the situation of her brothers and sisters in Mitzrayim. And she took it so personally as it, that she was bitter because of that. And because of her bitterness, she, would call, she was called Miriam. Al Shim Hamilo, because of the bitterness, comes from the word Mole also, the bitterness. That's what she was called Miriam. And Rebbe brings a Medrash, that because of her bitterness, she was Zeche, that the Medrash should say, Heme da Kodesh Baruch Gales from Miriam, that Almighty God uh, put up a, a Redeemer, and it's Miriam, because she agonized so much about the situation of her brothers and sisters. In Mitzrayim. Not only that, here in the here in the Pasuk, it says Vatikach Miriam Hanvio Achis Aharin, the sister of Aharin. And again there is a question. Achis Aharin Vele Achis Mesha. Is she only the sister of Aharin? Isn't she also the sister of Mesha? Lachela should have said both. Achis Achis Aharin or Mesha or Mesha ve Aharin. And the answer is that she prophesied before Mesha Rabbeinu was born. She was five years older than Mesha Rabbeinu. And when she was five years old, the cute little girl, Miriam, would run around the community and she would say, you know, my mommy is going to have a baby. And that baby is going to redeem, is going to take the Jewish people out of Egypt. And not everybody was happy with the fact that she that she told things from the house, so to speak. And not only that, when he Moshe Rabbeinu was born, and they had to put him into the water, we all know the story. Her father called her over, and he tapped her on her head, ever so gently, and he said, Biti, where is your prophecy? This son is going to redeem the Jewish people? Look what's happening. We're putting him out on the water. Nevertheless, it says, And his sister stood from afar. What does it say? She wanted to know what's going to happen. So the medal says she stood there to see what is going to be at the end of, 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 of her prophecy. And finally, the medal says, her father kissed her on her forehead and he said, Biti, 
Niskaimo Nevuosich, your prophecy was fulfilled. So this is Miriam. Miriam who was bitter about the faith of her brothers and sisters. Miriam who prophesied about Mesha Rabbeinu. Miriam who stood there to make sure to see what is going to happen with her little brother. And in this in this sicha, the Rebbe stresses more than once that she was meritorious, that the Geulo is, is on her name because she prophesied about the Geulo, about the, about, about the redemption. Interesting in this sicha, the Rebbe mentions another great woman and he compares her to Miriam. And the Rebbe mentions Rachel Imenu, called in English Mother Rachel, but Rachel Imenu is more what we can understand. And the Rebbe brings the Pasuk, Keom Hashem, so said Almighty God. When she was crying, Rachel Mevako Al she's crying about her children. Keil Balomo Nishma, a voice is heard from on high. It's Rochel who is crying about her children, and she doesn't want to be comforted. But Almighty God answers Rochel, and he says, Refrain your voice from weeping, and your eyes from tears. There is reward for your activities. Neum Hashem said, Almighty God, Veshovu me'eret seiv. And your children, now they're in Golos, but we, Almighty God says to her, Rochel, remember, Veshovu me'eret seiv, they will return from the land of the enemy. Moreover, V'yesh tikva le'achalisech. And there is hope for your future. Neum Hashem said, Almighty God, Veshovu vonim ligvulom. And your children, will return to their borders. Ligvula means their borders. Even when they are not on the borders, the borders are theirs. It's their land. And they will return to the land. The Rebbe brings this posuk. Although, uh, at face value, there is no connection here. But maybe it's, a, it's very simple. Miriam agonized. Over, over her generation. The Rebetzin agonized over the generation. The Rochel cried for the generation, for her children, and so did the Rebetzin. So the Rebetzin was compared to Miriam and to Rochel. And although it looks like she, she was a private woman, but she was not. The Rebetzin gave away everything she had for the Rebbe. The Rebetzin did not have any life of her own whatsoever. The Rebetzin lived her life only and only for the Rebbe and for the Chesidim. And as the Rebbe mentioned, that what brought about the victory of the Sforim, that's what was known, was the words of the Rebetzin. When the Rebetzin said that her father and his Sforim belonged to Chesidim, and when the Rebetzin said that, the, uh, the, oppos- the lawyer for the opposition threw his pencil on the table. He knew that these are the words that are going to make the difference. And the Rebbe said f- from, for, for, from, for, uh, that it's, there's an indication from the judge that when he saw this, um, he, he nodded it was his head and he, and he said something to, that this is, this is very strong. And this is what made the decision of the judge, Charles Sifton, to give this for them to the Rebbe and to, Chaz- and to Chabad. So the Rebbe speaks about it and about the dedication of the Rebbe to the Rebbe and to Hasidim. And the Rebbe asks, and it's in the Sikha, the Rebbe asks, Mazalo Bachaim, he brings Mazali Bachaim of who Bachaim? Zali Bachaim. It says concerning Yankiv. Yankiv Avinu did Lameis. Says the Gemara, why? 
that we are equating him and his children. So the Rebbe brings that concerning the Rebbetzin. One would ask, physical children is not the case here. But the Rebbetzin had children. And when somebody asked her the question, maybe you shouldn't have, but he did. If she has children, she says, my husband and I have many children all over the world. But the Rebbe endorses this comment. And the Rebbe brings the Posek Mazale Bachaim of Hu Bachaim concerning the Rebetzin. So that all those who are named Chaya or Mushka, or Chaya Mushka, will conduct them, themselves in accordance with the work of the Rebetzin. And all Neshe Yisrael, whom she led, will conduct themselves in accordance with the Rebetzin. Then Mazale Bachaim, just like her children are alive, her children are alive. The Rebbe says that. Then that's Havhiba Chaim. Then, then the Rebetzin is also alive. And the Rebbe finishes that Bishus Noshim Tzitkoni, as he ends the, in, 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 in the Sicha, in the merit of Noshim Tzitkoni, of the righteous women, we were out of Mitzrayim. We are now in the same position. We're going out of Mitzrayim. Moreover, Mitzrayim was only a, a one Golus. And after the Golos of Mitzrayim, there was another Golos. But now we're going out of Mitzrayim, of this great Golos, and it's a Golos She'enach HaLeotzal. There's no Golos after this. This is going to be the ultimate Geulo, the eternal Geulo. And B'shus Noshem Tzitkonis, in the merit of the righteous women, we got out of Mitzrayim, by the same token, in the merit of the righteous women all over the world. We will go out of this Golos, Gezunt HaHeit Um